Almighty Father, we uh, thank you for uh, being able, for those of us who are here, to be here. Uh, we pray that if there are those who are yet to come, that you would bring them here safely. If there are those who are uh, coming on to the live stream, I pray that they would uh, have no issues doing so. I pray that this lesson would be fruitful and uh, that in it your word would be found. And we give you thanks, Lord, that you are here in our midst and that we have your spirit illuminating. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'd like to start by reading from um, Psalms 14. And I'm reading from verses 1 to 4. Psalms 14, 1 to 4. Um, and this is a psalm of David that was written for the choir master. So it was meant to be sung. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They do abominable deeds. There is none who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on the children of man to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. They have all turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. There is none who does good, not even one. Have they no knowledge, all the evildoers who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon the Lord? The fool says in his heart, there is no, no God. It is not wise to deny the God who created you, who put breath in you, who knit you together in the mother's womb. But that is what atheism is all about. Don't they have a holiday named after them? Who? April Fool's Day. Ah, yes. Well, so... The Bible says there is no God. There's Christianity. There's atheism. <laughs> There's also something we want to mention briefly towards the end of our time together, and that's agnosticism. Um, and so, what is an atheist? Someone who does Excuse me. Is he, is he somebody that denies the existence of God? They say there is no God. There is no God. Now, an agnostic is something a little different because agnostics basically say, well, it's not a little difference. There's a difference. Agnostics are those who say, you can't know. He is unknowable, so I am on the fence here. I, uh, I cannot deny the existence. I cannot uh, deny the non-existence of God. So even though, you know, we've read before in Romans chapter 1, verses 18, 23, where, you know, the, the, the universe displays God, tells of his creation, where we get that general a revelation which is available to everyone. Atheists deny that. Agnostics say that is not sufficient to know God. But in the eyes of God, both are without excuse. And if you look at their worldview, and it's kind of hard to talk about an agnostic's worldview, but I guarantee you that every agnostic has a worldview of some sort. Oh, yeah, because we all have worldviews, but especially within the atheistic and the atheistic worldview is also might be considered the naturalistic worldview, um, the humanist worldview. Uh, there, there are many aspects that atheism gets its uh, it gets into. And so uh, there are a lot of atheists in the world. A lot, yep. especially in the Western. So we want to start with our systemology, as we always do. 
So systemology. Christianity systemology, we already know, right? Yep. We've gone through it enough. So what is it? We have a creator God. Yep. We'll make this one in three, right? Triune God, yep. Triune God. One in essence, but three in persons. He's what? Infinite? Infinite. Anything else? Immortal. Immortal. Or let's say eternal. Eternal, sorry. That's good. Personal. Personal. So the omnis, right? Omniscient. Omniscient. Omnipresent. Omnipotent. Right? And anything else? I think that's pretty good description of the God. Of course, we understand there's there's a lot more to God. I mean, we know we can get into Christ, and we will do that. But for this basic understanding, okay, the systemology of atheism. When it comes to the deity, no God. No supernatural. Yeah, no supernatural. That's right. Okay. That's basically it. Yeah. No God. And no supernatural. Everything comes out of natural uh, things. Okay, humanity. So that's God. God. Humanity. What is man in Christian worldview? The creation of God. How are we created? In his image. Yes, in his image. Now, you can get into all the details of what his image is. We've already gone through that in, in earlier things. But what image. else are we creating? Flawed? Were we created as flawed? No, we were created perfect. Right? Right. What else? Were we created? Free choice. Free will. Right. Okay. How about uh, atheism? Evolution. Mm -hmm. So basically, we're not created. That's right. Although they still cannot. But we develop. Yeah. Developed. By natural processes. Processes. Over time, no. Processes from lesser organisms. Can we say that? Yep. Now that's evolution. We, that's evolution. And of course, what 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 we can't and this is already getting darker right what we what they can't do you know they have all kinds of ideas of how evolution occurs but they've never been able to understand how organisms actually start 
they can't even explain how germination works and how how it interacts. It's, it's weird. Well, there's a lot that isn't understood totally, but I mean, we do know that germination works. Germination happens. There, there is scientific study in that. But the issue is that, first of all, they they do not have sufficient evidence to show that kind becomes other kind. But even before that, they can't explain how the world came to be. Right? How life came to be, I should say. Uh, they can't under they can't explain fully how the big bang that they believe in happened, right? They can't. They can have theories, but that's it. Okay, let's go to soteriology. What is that? Salvation. Right, salvation. How in the Christian worldview does one Get saved through knowing Jesus Christ. Specifically, faith in Christ's sacrifice on the cross, right? Yep. Christ's sacrifice. Okay. So obviously, every time we do this, we go through the same stuff. We should know it by the end of all this. Very well. How about soteriology within atheism? There is nothing. That's right. I mean, people don't need saving. There's no hope. There's nothing. That's, that, there's just no need. That's why they, they, that's why so many uh, people who are atheists try to freeze their bodies so they can come to life again. And and because all there is is the body. That's it. And the mind. There's no that state. is in the body. It's you part of the body. They right? don't have a belief soul. No soul. No soul. No. And they're very nihilistic to the mo for the most part. Most atheists don't believe in anything after death. I won't say all, but most, okay? That is a, a common um, aspect of atheism. Now, I'm talking about, now, what, this is a very specific type of atheism. I should say that, okay? Because if you don't believe in the God of a Bible, uh, you are an atheist. Anyone who doesn't believe in the God of the Bible, from a Christian worldview perspective, is an atheist. Okay? But we're talking about specifically is atheism, as it's certainly understood these days, which is those who do not believe in any God. Yeah. Okay? What about eschatology? What's eschatology? Future events. More, more to the point. End of it. The end. Right? Oh, yes. Right? Yes. Okay. And in Christianity, what is our eschatology? There's a future home to, uh, to go to. There's two possible homes to go to, in a sense, right? What's the one? Heaven. Heaven. What's the other? A millennial kingdom ruled by Christ. Yes, there's part of it, but the ultimate is heaven or hell. Hell, right? How do you get there? Based on faith. Yeah. In Christ, obviously. Okay, that's simple. We know that. How about the eschatology? Of atheism. Same. Nothing. I don't know what they have. And I'm sure it varies a lot. 
you know, for us in humanity, I mean, you have uh, people like um, Elon Musk who is seeking to make human life multiplanetary, right? Why? Because we're getting overcrowded, so, uh, according to him. No, he would not say that. He doesn't say that we're overpopulated. He says just the opposite. We're underpopulated as a, as a planet. But, he, but you know, you think of climate change. I don't know if he's a climate change guy. And you think of meteors that come to wipe out, you know, life as we know it. Well, then, you know, cataclysm. Plan B, plan C. Sorry? Plan B, plan C. Plan B, plan C. Um, I mean, there is a logic to it that if we go here, there, everywhere in the solar system, then if we're wiped out here on Earth, there's still the human um, species that they keeps they going. At it going forward. That that is that is kind of the. If we're going to end, we're going to end with a bang. Of some sort. Or peter out. Right? We might peter out. If it's just climate change, for instance, we might all slowly, you know, disappear from whatever. As a, as a, for, for human existence. And then... Most part, nothing. That's it. Yeah. Nothing to go on after that. Uh, so Any thoughts or questions? Yeah, so teriology for an atheism, for an atheistic guy, is that you live on through your descendants. It's, you know, some people, I have had people say to me, well, it's my legacy that goes on. Right? And... Uh, that can be true. I mean, we still know the name Alexander, but Alexander had no progeny, right? But but his name goes on. We uh, have, uh, but how many generations will? I mean, I know that I I pray that my when I go when I leave this earth, I'll have two children, two boys, and may, maybe their spouses and their families, and they'll remember dad or grandpa. Right? Yeah. And the next generation, my grandchildren will have children, God willing, if if the Lord tarries that long. And will they remember their great grandpa? Maybe. I know my great grandfather's uh, names, yeah. but nothing else about him. And then you go another generation behind that, and another generation behind that. And beyond that, you know, is my legacy going to continue? Now, if I, you know, if I'm an Albert Einstein, perhaps, you know, for a longer time, but there comes a point where that ends. And when it ends, nothing. That's the end. You know, uh, in, 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 for some people, it's simply, well, I want to leave this earth uh, a better place or having helped to make the earth a better place. But what's the point? If the earth's going to end one day, or uh, should it end one day, you know? And, and we know from history that you can be part of making the world better, being part of the solution, so to speak. But there's so many other people who are just um, unmitigating that by their own lack of putting things back into the world. So it, 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 it becomes sort of a meaningless thing, I think. Any other questions? Any other thoughts? Any other answers? How's that make you feel? How's this make you feel? Depressed. Do you see it? Uh, um, do you see this as a potentially reasonable and yet depressing perspective? Is there a reasonableness to that? No. I I don't I don't see things occurring more complex with each mutation. That's what the atheists would believe. Yeah. And I don't see it because every mutation that I've ever seen has 
been a deterioration. Well, let's go deeper into our elements of worldview that uh, we have traditionally been going through. Let's uh, look at um, teleology. What is our purpose? What teleology is? What is our purpose? You cheated, didn't you? Yes, I did. It's it's in here. Uh, it's in the pa on the papers. I know. Thank you. Okay, teleology. So, to serve. What is Christian te teleology? To serve God. Well, before we serve Him, what do we want to do? Live for Him. Get saved. Enter into oh, yeah. a relationship with God. Relationships. Right? Enter yeah. into relationship with God. God. Serve. Enjoy His presence. Yes? Yes, yes. That's the purpose. Is it not? Yeah. Of the Christian worldview? Yes. To have fellowship. And of course, we enter into that relationship with God through Christ. 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 So, what about atheism? What do you think the teleology of atheism would be? What would be the purpose of humanity? We were just talking about. We were just talking about, oh, leave the world a better place, blah, 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 blah. And uh, in the meantime, it's meaningless. So honestly, if you're really honest with your worldview, there's no purpose. Because how can you have a purpose? On um, what do you base a purpose? Okay. But some people will say, you know, to, to maintain, and some would say improve, like Hitler, the, the species, mankind, in this particular case, right? That's, that's our purpose, to keep going, right? We just yes. keep going. If there's any purpose, it's purely an evolutionary purpose of propagating the species. Does that make sense? If you're yeah. unselfish and altruistic, yes, for people, then you have the opposite of they turn it into a game, the game of life. And I played that when I was a kid on that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. After that, I was like so depressed. But if you play that, and it's like, wow, if this is what the game of life is really about, after that, I was completely depressed because. You know, the ultimate thing is like win at the game of life when it's because there are people who are just out there for themselves, right? Because, yeah, yeah you know a lot out there. So if it's not, if you get, yeah, as you say, in altruism, altruistically, people will say, well, we need to just propagate, we need to make the world better, we need to do this. That's, that's our purpose. Um, or your purpose is I'm the king of the castle. Survival of the fittest, right? Now, if you were following a true atheistic perspective, there is uh, really, how do you come to any purpose? There is no... We're just one species among, you know, thousands of species on this planet. Why are we any more important? You take that far enough and then you get like the the you know the groups like PETA who say that the you know the, the killing of of chickens is comparable to the Holocaust. Because chickens and humans are equal. Right? There's there's no difference. Or the turkey 
Okay. But where does that ethics come from? Because if our primary purpose is to propagate the species and other species die as a result, then so what? So what? That's, that's, that's the game of life. The evolutionary game of life, which has no interest in the human species. Right? There's no purpose for us other than that we happen to exist at this time in history. And we may end. Now, you might want to say, well, we have to make the species better. Sure. You know, we need a, the, next, the next race, the next human race, homo superior, you know. Well, uh, the robots rise up and then we'll... And then the robots rise up and then that's the end of it all. So, oh, <laughs> but, but the point is, you may have your purpose, but... The purpose in itself within an atheistic framework is purposeless. Yes. If you understand what I'm saying. Yep. Okay. Ethics. <laughs> Let's talk about ethics. Cool. Ethics is the study of how oh, we should. What's decent? How, how, yeah, how, how should people behave? Right? Yeah. Sure. And within Christianity, we, we touched on that this morning in this morning's service. Love. What determines our ethics? The Bible. The Bible. The Bible with the laws, and then the laws become the traditions. Well, no, our ethics are done by the, the Bible, and in specific, the by law tradi of tradition, the law of the law of God. God. Yes. And what did God command us to do? Love each other. Love. Love, love. Right? Ethics is based on how we love God, and in loving God, how we treat Others, yep, with care, right? Yes. How about standards? High standards of love. High standards for believers, right? Yes. In fact, higher than the law in that that was followed by Israel in the Old Testament. Yes. And do it with excellence. Yeah. Okay, so th that's how we we behave ethically. Oh, and and what about our consideration? Do we consider believers uh, before we consider unbelievers? No. Do we have different rules for treating believers and under un unbelievers? So we either have same consideration. For everyone, but for our purpose, we're going to say believers. Yep. Yeah. And non. I'll put so I have, don't have to do another line. And non believers. And non. What do you think atheism ethics is based on? I'm more intelligent than you, so I'm superior to you. Not all atheists think no. that way, although there is a tendency, I think, to to be a little bit uh, snobbish in that way. But who determines right and wrong? I do. I can say that, but I think more in general. Consensus. Consensus. Society. Yeah. Right. But we as a group uh, are, are the society. Sure. But in general, there are conventions that as a society we take on. Right? And um, ethics for 
for atheists, it's just part of evolutionary uh, our evolution. In other words, my 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 brain, your brain, everybody's brain has developed over centuries to be these things that are enable us to have ethics, right? To have ideas of right and wrong. Where these ideas come from, they don't say. They will talk about it as being, uh, um, well, just um, helping the social wheel kind of thing. It's 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 just something that's better for the species. And there's no necessity really for standards. Um, what works socially? It's hard not to be a bully in in atheism. So if I if I think that um, or, or or I believe all of this and all of that and all of that systemology that we've talked about, that so, you know the standards of ethics is just dependent on you know you know what the social uh, fabric considers to be workable in the society. Now, that could be many things. So it becomes acceptable in a certain society for children to um, dishonor their parents before the government, uh, as as happens in many communist uh, nations, where you know, and 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 in the Hitler Youth as well, if you remember, that they were encouraged to tell on their parents. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that was perfectly acceptable standard. Because that was the feeling of how things should work social. Right? And that ultimately comes down to the fact that it all comes from human phallus, uh, human fallenness rather than from a loving, creative. God. That makes sense? Yep. Yeah. Any questions? Any answers? I always like to ask that. Uh, okay. They, they really didn't have a Praxology. Yeah. Which is? What do we do? Do. do. Okay. Uh, or what should we do? What sh yeah, should, should, should. Praxology. And we've talked about what we do as Christians in general, worldview. Any comments? What do we do? What did what, what do we do? Well, we did we do baptism? Yes? Prayer. Yes. Lord's table, just keep with the Lord's table, weekly, prayer, weekly meetings, weekly meetings, yeah, weekly worship, does it need to be weekly? Could be, do, could yeah. be any time. Be daily. Daily, yeah. Right? Because the early church. So, in a sense, what we could do is simply say worship. Yeah, worship. Which is part of what we do. Because do we worship God. on Wednesday evenings for a prayer meeting? Yeah. Absolutely. Do we <laughs> worship? What does the um, does the worship team when they get together to practice? Do they worship? Yes. Yep. Absolutely. So, worship. How about fellowship? 
Is that yeah. something we do? Yep. Yes. As part of the Christian praxology? Yes. Of outreach, missions, yes. evangelism. Yes? Yes. So these are all things that we do in a worldview sense as believers in Jesus Christ, born again believers in Jesus Christ. Do all churches do baptism? No. No, because you can go to a Salvation Army church, they won't do baptism, they won't do Lord's table. They won't deny you to do somewhere else, but they don't do it. Do all churches pray? They should. They should, but do they? No. Do all uh, uh, worship? Well, in general, virtually all churches worship. Fellowship? Well, some it's good fellowship and some not so good. Uh, do they all do outreach, missions, evangelism? No. 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 They do what might be membership drives. They might try to get people in by uh, dumbing down the gospel or watering down the gospel watering, to make yes. it more palatable. But they don't take the, what is truly Christian and take it out into the world. So there are churches like that. But that is really what Christian proxology ought to be. Okay, What about atheism? You have a mission to enlighten people into your belief system. Do you? Well, that's, I know some do. That's you know, that's a Richard Dawkins kind of thing uh, to get other people to know what you believe. But does every atheist feel that you have no that they need to, you need to be an atheist? So I would suggest that in a sense of like anything like what we do, there's no praxis, no real praxis. There's nothing that is specific to an atheist perspective. Because what is, you know, now there might be individual and group practices, but there are so many different individuals, so many different groups, it's hard to put it all together. But praxis isn't all that important either, if, or it shouldn't be if you're following a worldview of atheism. Um, what? Hmm? Would they want fellowship? What would they, they might want it? Do they need it? You know, is there a, is there a call for fellowship among atheists? Some atheists will fellowship with other atheists, go to their atheist meetings, uh, but others won't. Um, what would you call the Unitarian Church then? Uh, they gather together. Apostate. Yeah, and many of the Unitarians are, they consider themselves atheists and they yep. meet together. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I say, in, in this case, and, and, and understand what I'm trying to say. In a biblical sense, because yeah. our worldview is biblical, these are things that we do. Why do we do baptism? Because it was the first step in obedience to the Lord. The Lord ordained it. Yep. Why do we do the Lord's table? The Lord ordained it. Why do we do prayer, worship, fellowship, outreach, missions, evangelism? Because in the scriptures, in our Bible, all of those things are vital to faith. And so we practice them. But what's vital in atheism? Nothing. Nothing. So how do you develop a praxis? You can have personal praxis. Well, I go and I, I um, thank, the, thank nature. Well, that's actually atomism. <laughs> but, uh, um, I, you know, you can do whatever you want. Because there's no... Right to me. Huh? It feels right to me. It feels right to me. One of the things I do say is go to uh, my local coffee shop and I pay for the coffee of the person after me. 
That's my praxis. Pay it forward. Pay it forward. There's nothing wrong with pay it forward. And actually, there's nothing wrong with paying it forward. It's it's actually, but the interesting thing is, well, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. <laughs> Epistemology. Oh, my goodness. Epistemology. Can't remember how to spell it. Oh dear. What's epistemology? Opinion versus what is true. No, not exactly. How do we know and what is how do we know what we know? Where does knowledge come from? Where does God? knowledge come from in within the Christian? From world? God and the Bible. Well, we we sort of have created uh, a, a, a set of three things, if you remember, that we have said. Special that revelation. God, there's no. So, first of all, let's start with. Special revelation. Let's start with a different one. Oh. One that everybody has access to. Nature. General. General revelation. Yeah. General revelation. Right? Yes. yes. And then special revelation. special revelation. What is special revelation? The Bible. The Bible. Because it is inspired by, revealed by, it's 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 the reality of God's will for us, yep. expressed by him through people. It's special revelation. And then one other thing. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Is there other ways to have knowledge? Well, you're learning stuff here. It says in the Bible to ask God and he'll tell you. Yes. Yeah. But in essence, everything that we get our information from, even if it's passed down to us, from others? It's from general revelation, special revelation, and should be um, uh, uh, supported by the Holy Spirit illuminating. And so we know that if knowledge comes and it's not inconsistent, you see, that that's not true knowledge. So these are the major ways that knowledge comes to us, right? Let's talk about atheism. How do we gain knowledge? Where does knowledge come from for an atheist? From others, from observation. Well, what's the what's the prima source of knowledge within an atheistic worldview? What's right for you is, is, is right for you, and what's right for me is right for me. Starts with an S. As a C. Science. Uh, ah, I heard it. Science. Science. If there is no supernatural, no supernatural revelation, if revelation comes, well, if truth comes only from what, you know, the way the atheist sees the world, truth can only come from what I see, see what I can witness. Okay? And so that's what science is, isn't it? Science is, is seeing the world and trying to understand how the world works. Does it, is it not? How does this world work? But if, Why is it when this apple comes out of my hand, it's going to fall to the floor? Right? And but, yeah. but if, if uh, it doesn't uh, work from my observation of science, then I'm going to try to create an alternative explanation. Like say the apple falls. And it doesn't get bruised. Wait a minute. Why didn't it get bruised? There must be an explanation. 
Yes, there has to be an explanation. If you see the apple fall, and then just before it falls, it floats, there has to be a scientific explanation. Okay? And maybe there is. Maybe there is. You can't deny it. It certainly needs to be investigated. But if it seems to have a purpose that brings faith, maybe it's a miracle, right? But you cannot have miracles within an atheistic perspective because it's a purely naturalistic perspective. Natural, yeah. And so science tells us what is. And human intellect Where does human intellect enter it, into it? It determines what is right. Ooh. Now, here's the interesting thing. So you have science that is telling us that the world, the universe, came from nothing. But how does that happen? Well, let's explain it. There was some infinitis infinitesimal uh, matter that blew up to become the Big Bang. I'm simplifying immensely, right? And we know this because everything we see in our telescope shows redshifting. And if you understand anything about Doppler uh, effects, as you see something, uh, you know, if you hear a plane and the plane seems high pitched as it's coming to you and it seems lower pitched as you're going, it's going away, that's because the waves are coming uh, in a tighter format as it's coming to you, right? Because each time the object moves forward, it just, you know, brings more of a compression of the sound wave. But then when it's going away, it gets longer. Well, the same thing happens with light. Um, that uh, uh, light turns redder as it's going away. Uh, ultraviolet light, I don't know uh, other light, uh, well, how it works. but And so if you look out and they say, oh, look, it's all red shifting. So obviously it's all moving out. Okay. Well, what happens when you go as different oh, no. <laughs> with, with some of the science, like with the, the web telescope and so on? Things aren't quite the way it is. Well, then all of a sudden, I have to rethink how everything happened, which they're doing. They're trying to do. And the human intelligence determines that this is now right as opposed to that. Okay, that's science. Now, there's some truth to that even uh. within science that within any science science is only as good as um the hypothesis the testing and the results and if somebody uh revises the hypothesis and does different tests that get different results sure you have to explain that and and that's fine there's nothing wrong to our christians anti-science which we're often claimed of being, and some are, unfortunately. But no, who? Where did science, modern science, come from? From from a Christ like Christianity, yeah, right. Trying, you know, understanding that there seems to be law in the universe, and knowing that, as they did, that there was a lawgiver, that was no surprise to them. And how did the lawgiver create this universe? How does this uh, and and uh, and and they were you know it was to help glorify God. That's what uh, Newton did in his Principia Mathematica, his his big uh, magnus opus. Um, that at, at, at the beginning he says, oh, just, "I look at this and what an amazing God it is that creates this, right?" So that's knowledge uh, from an atheistic, uh, and, and of course within atheism, if it's human um, that determines what is right, if it's humans that determine what is right to do, 
then it's it's relative because different humans and different human groups can have different ideas and 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 the truth isn't the same for everybody that's why that's why um they talk about consensus this is what we believe yes yes that's an interesting point it's knowledge by consensus all of this uh ethics as well as epistemology uh knowledge That's a good thing to put in by consensus, as opposed to the Christian worldview that believes that knowledge is by God, God, and the revelation of God. Knowledge by God. Okay, that doesn't mean that science isn't something we can learn about God, but it will never. Uh, no science will ever come up and deny God's existence. There is no science yet, to my knowledge, that could honestly say, here, look at this, this proves God doesn't exist. Now, we can't say prove God does exist. Because again, it gets back to that word, what is proof? Right? But um, anyways. Uh, etiology. How in the world did we get here? And I'm getting down here. Okay. Okay. Etiology. How did we get here? It began with God. 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 What? God created. God created. And then what happened? We messed up. We messed and up. No. The fall. Uh, the fall. And then what? We need reconciliation somehow. So Christ. Right. Yep. We're simplifying, of course. Because I'm running out of space. And then what happened after Christ? What's going on now? Church age. Church age. Church. Yeah. Okay. Great. This is not good for my back. Okay. Etiology. Atheism. We just exist. And on what they were in the Big Bang. Yeah, we can mention the Big Bang. I think most, well, it's coming out of favor again. Yeah. What are other anyone ever hear this one? From Bill to the zoo to you. Now it's it's a little tongue in cheek, but the whole idea is evolution over millions and millions of years. Not an evolution is not just about species. It's the evolution of the universe, the evolution of of geology, of the world, the evolution of 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 species coming to man, and man will continue to evolve, and species until such time as man uh, the, our species disappear, but then life continues in other ways, just not with us. Excuse me. So that's an atheistic kind of etiological perspective. It, it has no real end. It has no real, uh, it has a beginning, but there's no, you know, the beginning is not much different than what we think, except we really do think and rightly so, because it's been revealed to us that the universe came from nothing. But for an atheist, what in the world is nothing? Right? 
something must have started. There was something. That's how they'll explain it. But but that something was nothing. Uh, you know, the, there's there's uh, it, it's very hard to to understand. But through mill billions and millions of years and hundreds of thousands eons, you know, uh, that's that's the that's how we got here. Okay. Now, in all of this, there's uh, just a, a comment I want to make about agnosticism. I don't want to spend a lot of time on agnosticism. I, I, I think it's easy to respond to agnosticism in some way. Now, everybody's different. Some people are harder to reach than others. But with agnosticism, you, you, you can, because there's a lack of belief, you can talk about what that lack of belief is, about, what that, where that lack comes from. So agnosticism in itself comes from a Greek, from two Greek uh, words, a Greek uh, word and a suffix. So a, which means uh, not. Right? And gnosis, which means knowledge. So, whereas the Greek for atheism is a, the same a, not theism, God, this is not knowledge. And these are coined phrases. You know, they weren't talking about agnosticism in the days of the Greeks, ancient Greeks. This is more of the uh, period since the 17th, 18th century that these terms have been uh, coined. And agnostics believe that whether there is a God, whether there isn't a God, he, is, he she, it, from the, anybody's perspective there, is unknowable. And so it's impossible to take a position on the matter which can be held. Now, from a Christian worldview perspective, what is the challenge with that? What is the challenge with saying that God is ultimately unknown? That he is everything. He knows. That he has revealed himself to us so that we can know him. Okay, so it denies the truths of the Bible, but it also denies general revelation. Yep. Right? Yep. The ones we read about in Romans 1, 18 to 23. It denies that God is knowable through the universe. There must be a designer. Come on. I mean, that's that's the issue. If it looks like a duck, if it sounds like a duck, if it, it quacks like a duck, if it swims like a duck, well, I can't know whether it's a duck or not. That's weird. Well, that is weird. If it looks designed and it acts designed, probably a unicorn. It's probably designed. That's the universe. And if it's designed, guess what? There's a designer. And I, I think agnostics, even more than atheists, have no grounds for any true uh, ethic. Or any certain knowledge at all. Any hope that an agnostic might have is a wishful hope. It's not a certain hope. Because they can't know anything. If they can't know God from the, you know, all that is around us. And that's the same with the atheists. How can they not know God? And the only thing I can say is there's a willful disregard for the designer of this universe. Could you go a step further? There's a, there's a willful disregard of having somebody who is either a designer or creator that you might be accountable to. 
Well, there certainly is ultimately that, which, you know, I, if, I, if I don't want to accept that there is something greater than I am that uh, should guide me, and I should be guided by, then I don't want to acknowledge a God, benevolent or otherwise, right? Because I want to be the master of my own destiny. Of course. And so if I want to ignore God, then I need to come up with a, a way for everything to be. And that's what atheists do. Ultimately, they have to come up with a worldview that explains things as we see them without God, without supernatural power, without any of these things. And, and then I must deny anything that's supernatural. So when you see Christ die and rise again, I can't accept that. I can't receive that. There's got to be more natural explanation. It cannot be a supernatural. It cannot be. And therefore, I cannot accept it. So if he really existed, then it must have been because he swooned. And, uh, and, well, uh, that's one perspective. Or it must have been that the, um, the um, uh, disciples removed his body from the tomb that was locked, well, that was sealed and had soldiers around it. Uh, they somehow drugged the soldiers, I guess, and took the body away. But, but you know, uh, and that would explain their depression until they saw Jesus. I, you know, there's all kinds of challenges with with atheism, but it's answerable. And we're going to talk about that That's down true. the road. We're going to look at how do we share the gospel with atheists because. You can share. Yes. But the problem with atheism is that by denying a creator, there is no real way to understand why things are rather than why they are not. Why is there creation? How do we explain this? How do we explain that we are here in a finely tuned universe? And the sheer enormity of the complexity and fine-tuning of the universe is really inexplicable by natural means. There is no explanatory power to give any reason for life, especially human life, or ethical standards of behavior, or even knowledge. Because if my brain was created through natural processes, random, chaotic processes, how do I trust that what my brain, what was created that is my brain, can be trusted? Well, I can't. Do you know, if you were to shake uh, a bunch of computer parts in a box and shake it for oh, let's say 10 million years, and you come out, you open the box, and there's a lot more human parts than a computer has. But you open the box and there's a computer. Are you going to trust what that computer says if it were to work? No. Because I have no idea how that makes any, you know, how, you know, I have, there, there's just nothing to base so knowledge in itself is unknowable, I think, from a Christian perspective. And it doesn't mean that atheists can't be moral. There are many people, atheists, who are moral, even from Christian perspective, right? But they have no basis for morality. How is it that they know that this is moral, that murdering is not moral, is, is immoral? How do they know that? Not an atheistic worldview. They they don't, but uh, but there is the law is written, written in their heart on their hearts. The Bible tells us how. 
why they would, even if they don't believe in God, the truth is written in their hearts. Your hearts. They just don't want to, you know, they don't want to recognize that truth. Right. Right? Uh, atheists can be reasonable. You can have a reasonable argument with an atheist. But uh, you have to ask, how do you trust your reason? Considering the brains they reason with are developed by chance, random chance, with no purpose or design. Because evolution is not, it has no foreknowledge. Evolution just is chance, right? There's no purpose in evolution. So if there's no purpose to your brain, how do you trust your brain? How do you know that you can trust it? And in fact, the way evolution works, our brains are more likely to be faulty than not. If it's designed by accident, it's more likely to be faulty, isn't it? Yep. Agnosticism is a denial that one can understand any of the existential questions of life. And I, I think. I feel a lot of pity for agnostics, and I was an agnostic at one time. It, it's, it, it, you know, because you're in a quagmire of uncertainty and doubt. And that's unnecessary. Yeah, unnecessary. But Christianity, to, to conclude, offers, I think, a reasonable explanation for our universe. An observable explanation for our universe. One that we can see when, when we read the Bible, we can see it pertains to the universe, what the Bible says. It, it agrees with the universe as we see it and witness it. But not only that, but it offers a sure hope. For those who believe in Christ. That's that's Amen. a Christian worldview. Yes. Right on. Right? As opposed to the atheistic or agnostic worldview. Is there any other thoughts or questions, observations that anyone wants to make before we finish for the night? Does all that make sense to you? It does to me. I mean, it, it saddens me. Yeah. Makes me cry. But, you know, we understand that the world does not want to know Jesus. Exactly. Right? Right. You know, it's all right to care for the world on a warming pot. But let's not talk about Jesus. Well, is that really caring for the world? No. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for this time together. We pray your blessing on those who couldn't be here tonight. Uh, we uh, pray uh, for uh, uh, blessings for what we've learned that we might be able to use it to your glory, to your honor. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would help us to share these truths with others so that they might know you, the creator of all things, and Jesus Christ, their Savior. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.